Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you. If you're new, hit that subscribe button. You know, maybe. I don't know. Uh, to everybody who is subscribed, y'all leave a thumbs up. Give me a comment. All that shit, man. I really appreciate it all. This is going to be a gyno update. So I know in my, you know, a couple videos back, I said, uh-oh, we're getting gyno. <laughs> and uh, that was true. So I believe, though, I found out the root of it. I've been able to successfully treat it, and so far it seems to have gone away. So, in this video I'm going to break down exactly what I did, and uh, where basically I found the information that I needed in order to treat it successfully. So, without further ado, I guess let's take a look, right? So, as you can see, there's no lump or anything in there, you know. No lactation. Watch, I like lactate. I'd be like, shit my pants. No. See, no lactation, no lump. Totally gone. Now, I didn't let it get bad before I started treatment, obviously. Uh, I just started to notice that it was getting itchy, you know, in a way that it really hadn't before. And it was only my left nipple that just kept getting itchy. So, that was the first sign to me, you know, that I knew that... Uh, the potential for gyno was coming, right? The uh, the red flags were being raised. They were sounding the alarm. My nipple was like, you know, <laughs> send in the guards. We got fucking gyno. So <laughs> that's basically, you know, how I interpreted the situation anyway. And uh, so originally I thought that it was prolactin based because I had recently added a 19 nor into my cycle. And for whatever reason, there's this, idea in bodybuilding that prolactin causes gyno apparently it doesn't and i just learned this but the only way you can ca uh, cause gynecomastia or like the actual uh breast tissue to grow is through estrogen so you know and also caber and prammy and i i really don't want to fuck with that shit if i don't have to so i was kind of relieved when i found that information anyway uh, shout out, I actually found that from Leo Longevity and Tony Huge. They just recently did a video on gynecomastia, like a pretty uh, comprehensive video. I did take a clip from it. I was going to throw it in here. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to throw it in here. If I am, I'm going to throw it in at the end uh, so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But basically, it's just Leo being like, prolactin cannot cause gynecomastia because of, you know, A, B, and C, whatever. And he really goes into it and explains estrogen is the only way and the reason we know this has been studied so extensively is because of breast breast cancer research they need to know how to stop growing the you know breast tissue how to stop growing that gland so it's been researched you know pretty heavily so because of this new information right i decided to leave out the prammy i wasn't going to take gaber, caber anyway because of what it does can potentially do to your heart uh but i was thinking maybe prammy I do have it on deck because I have all my ancillaries on deck, and I recommend all you do too. But uh, instead of taking the Prammy, I just took Arimidex. I started with one milligram, and I took one milligram every other day for probably about a week. And I noticed the sensitivity was basically gone. Um, so I discontinued the Arimidex, and I'm not taking it anymore. I'm on the same cycle. Everything else is the same. The sensitivity is gone. So really, I think all I needed to do was just get my estrogen lower, at least for the time being. We'll see if it comes back. You know, I'll give updates and I'll let you know how I treat it when I do. But thus far, it only took about, let's see, you know, like a few milligrams of Arimidex to clear it up. Like I said, I didn't wait till it got bad. I just noticed sensitivity. So I think the key take home here for everyone is you got to be in tune, pay attention to your body and realize what's going on. If you feel like something's happening, it's probably happening. And it's better to address it, you know, rather than just like wait it out and then be like, oh shit, no, and now it really, really is bad, <laughs> right? You don't want to do that. You want to be as preemptive as possible in these kind of situations. Um, so, I mean, you know, Letrozole probably would have worked. Arimidex is just what I had on deck. Aromacin, any of those probably would have worked. The reason that I don't like, you know, I stay away from letrozole is because I don't want to crash my, crash my estrogen to zero. Letrozole is notorious for that. It's very strong. Uh, Arimidex is still very strong, but not as strong as letrozole. So, you know, I, I want to maintain, you know, uh, function. You know, enough estrogen is needed 
in order to be healthy and feel good and even build muscle and all that shit. So I'm not trying to crush it to zero, just trying to eliminate the breast tissue, right? So th these are all things you got to keep in mind. If you find yourself in my situation, you know, there's more than one factor at play, right? You can't just be like, oh, there's breast tissue. I'm going to take every single thing in the, in the world, you know, to get rid of this because then you're going to feel like shit, right? You know, another route I could have taken, I could have taken like tamoxifen or, you know, one of those um, drugs. If what are they called? CIRMs, uh, selective estrogen receptor modulators. But, you know, I just didn't, uh, to be honest, I just went with the tried and true Arimidex. I know it works. I've heard it a million times. This has been used for decades by bodybuilders. Um, and here, here we go. I'm another reason, you know, another success story of Arimidex. It fucking works. So, you know, I'm not advocating taking this shit long term. I think, honestly, if your dose is so high that you need to take a Rimidex with it just to maintain, then uh, you should consider lowering your dose or like trying to find different compounds that work better for you because you really don't want to be taking AIs long term. They're, you know, they're not like terrible for you, but, uh, you know, it's not great. It's just like adding another toxic compound in that you don't necessarily need to. You know what I mean? Like, there's other ways around estrogen sensitivity. Like, just use compounds that don't convert to estrogen, for one. You know, there's plenty of them. Um, so, you know, just keep these things in mind. That's my update. We got nothing going right now. We'll keep you in the, in the know. <laughs> and uh, I'll give you more updates if it comes back, what we did to treat it. And, you know, every, everything, uh, everything else. So, hey, to all my subscribers, thank you guys. Leave me a comment, a like, whatever. If you're new, think about subscribing. I love you all. Till the next one. Peace out.